What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Country Bunkers Trains. While we seem to have quite a few uh, post-war fans on the channel, I think that's excellent. That's awesome. <clears throat> you know, you read a lot on these uh, O-Gage forums and Facebook pages and whatnot, everybody claiming post-war is going away, it's fading, nobody's into it. I don't think that's quite right. I've seen quite a few people interested in post-war, luckily. Uh, I don't know how you can't like it. How would we be where we are today without it? Sure, these uh, engines don't offer the sights and sounds of their modern counterparts, but what they do lack in that department, they make up for with great looks, smell, and sheer mechanical marvel. Plus, plain nostalgia. There's nothing better than a post-war engine running under a Christmas tree. We've got a good one for you post-war buffs today. A 2245 Texas Special. What a gorgeous engine. You know, if you're going to be a post-war collector, I think this is one of them engines that you just have to have in the collection. It's just one of those staple items. Right up there with the Santa Fe's, the Norfolk and Western J's, and all the other great engines. This one is very deserving of being right in the same spot. The 2245 was first offered in the 1954 Lionel catalog. It was in production for two years. In 1955, it was joined by its 027 brother, the 2243 Santa Fe. The 2245 was the only 027 F3 that had clear portholes all throughout in both the A and the B units. In 1955, Lionel would eliminate the clear portholes on the B unit. All, however, all of the A units did come with clear portholes. You can see the portholes removed on one example of the 2367. Being a cheaper 027 model, this F3 sports only one rear truck mounted motor. <clears throat> it is also missing some of the finer details of its older brothers, the Santa Fe and the F3. Gone are the grab irons on the front of the nose as well as the screen vents on the roof. These came casted into the shell, as did all other F3s beyond 1954. There were three variations of the 2245 throughout its two-year run. The first variation, which is the most common, and what you see here, was made throughout 1954. This model had portholes, lenses, throughout both the A and the B unit, as well as sporting a single horizontal motor on the rear truck. <clears throat> the second variation was in early 1955. The A unit still came with the uh, clear porthole lenses attached, however the lenses were filled in on the B unit. This, this variation sported a single vertical mounted worm drive motor known as a Pullmore motor. <clears throat> the third variation, which is the rarest of the three, was in late 1955. This model also offered a single vertical mounted Pullmore motor. However, this model had black trucks instead of the silver painted ones that you see here. Although the third variation with the black trucks is the rarest of the three, it is not as sought after as, or as collected as this one that you see here, the, the first variation. This one having a little bit more detail and the horizontal motor is the one more people tend to go with. I picked this engine up off of eBay. In fact, it's one of the very few engines I've picked up off of eBay. I hear a lot of guys with horror stories purchasing through there, saying uh, the engine was broken, not as described, and it was junk. But I gotta say, the seller was actually great with this engine. <clears throat> he described everything beautifully and everything was just as, uh, just as he said. It came out of a uh, collector's collection and he was looking to downsize. This was a duplicate of uh, a little bit nicer one that he had. We struck a fair deal and, uh, and yeah, I've got it now. I love it. It's not uh, exactly pristine. It's got nicks in the paint. <clears throat> 
But I mean, for almost 70 years old, what more can you ask for? This one, even the horn still works. Not the greatest, but it does work. That seems to be a bit of a rarity, <laughs> at least for me. I did have to replace two uh, two portholes as they were missing. I had some uh, reproduction. They don't look quite as nice as the uh, the originals, but it's better than just gaping holes in the side. Here's a look underneath the shell where all the magic happens. You can get a look at that horizontally mounted motor. <clears throat> For comparison, here are the vertical motors on another F3. You can see the difference. These have a worm gear that drive down into the truck and spin the wheels. And this one has a gear set on the back that goes down into the trucks and spins another gear that which spins the wheels. The worm gears inside the truck, more or less. The shell is held on with two clips on the back that clamp onto the frame and a single screw on the front. A word of caution, never pick up an F3 from the shell. Always grab it from the frame or the wheels. <clears throat> a lot of F3s get damaged that way. You gotta figure, that's a, that's a heavy engine and a lot of weight on one little screw. I would consider myself a collector slash operator. I love collecting the stuff, but of course it's got to run as well. <clears throat> she is a good runner. Uh, she struggles a good little bit on the uh, the real tracks with a long train. The magnet traction isn't able to bite. <clears throat> a lot of guys have taken uh, 2343 frames because they're the same color and same setup, uh, but they're dual motored units and putting this shell on top of them that frame. I've contemplated doing so. I think it would uh, it'd make it a little bit better runner. But even still, as I say, she, she does run good. She just needs to be running on the good old uh, tubular track for the, the magnet traction to work. But anyway, here she is. Lionel did remake the 2245 in the post-war celebration series around 2000, I believe it was. That too was a gorgeous engine and sported some awesome sounds as well as TMCC control. I'd love to get me one of them. But of course, there's nothing beating the original. But now that we have the original, that gives way to getting the remake, right?
I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into the 2245. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. Until next time, guys, I'm Zach, and this is Country Bunkers Trains. Y'all take care. Have a good one.